Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to MacBreak Studio. My name is Mark Spencer. I'm here again with Steve Martin. Hey, Steve. Good to see you, Mark. How you doing? Good. And we're here once again to talk about Final Cut Pro 10. 10. Yes. <laughs> yes. In our, in our exploration of the, uh, the brave new world of Final Cut Pro 10. Now, uh, if you saw our last episode, we just started getting into things, talked a little bit about bringing in media and this whole new way of importing media and have it doing stuff in the background to analyze it. Correct. And you taught us about uh, events and keyword collections and smart collections. And right. still getting all the terminology down. So today we're going to move a little further and dive into where? Projects. 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 So what well, does that, that should mean? be a familiar term to Final Cut Pro 7 users. We had projects, uh, but projects in Final Cut 7 and projects in Final Cut Pro 10 do not equate. They're a little bit different. Same word, but different meaning. Different, okay. you know, exactly. Um, they're using Final Cut Pro 7's vocabulary, but they're not using Final Cut Pro 7's dictionary. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, so here's the thing. Uh, projects are managed from this area at the bottom called the project library. And okay. What a project essentially is, is it represents the sum total of your work in Final Cut Pro. That means your edit, your titles, your effects, graphics, everything, your work essentially. So a, pro a project is like what, what Final Cut Pro, and I don't want to assume everybody came from earlier versions of Final Cut Pro, but for those people who did, it would be like a sequence? It's very much like a sequence, but again, that word has been um, tossed. Okay. But it is, it's like a sequence. In fact, you can see here, this is, this is my project. And notice there's a film strip representing it. Okay. And you can skim over. I only have one project here, but that's essentially my work. See? I see. And um, your, the, fin your finished work or your in-process work, that's the story you're building. Right, right. now, every, you could think of uh, the project library as very similar to Final Cut Pro 7's browser. That's where you had all your sequences. But yes. the library is where you're managing all your projects. I see. Okay. There's only, and you can only work with one project at a time. So if I want to work with this project called New Project, I just double click on it and it opens it up in a timeline and now I'm ready to work on it. Okay. So the, and the pro, where did it go? Well, where did the project library go? It's, it's hidden, okay? And it you, sure is. You, I a, can tell that. There's a, there's, a couple, there's a couple ways to get back to it. Is one is you have an arrow here and then you have this, this little button down here, a little film reel. You, Show the project library, yeah, okay. Just, right, and command, tool tips. command zero is the command you get back to it, which used to be the command for bringing up the sequence settings in Final Cut yes, Pro 7. Yes. Don't even, don't, don't start okay. with that. But mostly you're going to learn keyboard shortcuts to, yep. to get around, but, yep. but see, I'm back now to the project library. Let's, let's, create, okay. let's create a project so they can see what's happening. So Great. to create a project, we click the plus button. Create, see, create a new project, plus. Okay. And uh, then you're asked to name the project. And uh, let's say I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, a, uh, I'm gonna do a project called Time Lapse, okay? And uh, right now it's, it's defaulting to looking inside the Rear Actors event folder. So see? wait, say something else, say a little bit more about that because you're creating a project, but here it's also talking about an event. Well, think about it. A project is going to be a timeline. It's going to look at clips. It has to know, well, what, what folder is it looking for for its media? So it's looking, it has to be associated. In this case, it's, to, it's, to, it's associated with this event called reenactors. I can have it associated with another event. Okay. But it's essentially, it's a way of linking itself to its media. Before there's anything even Before in the project. Before there's everything even in okay. the project, exactly. Am I, am I then restricted to only using the media in that event? No, you could use media from any project you want. Or from it, any event. From any event you want, exactly. Okay. I'm just saying that when you first create it, it wants to say, wants to this something. is the media, this is the primary folder I'm, I'm going to be looking at for my media. Okay. See? Okay. Now, you, uh, you could set automatically based on first clip. What that means is Final Cut Pro doesn't know what kind of clip you're even going to work with. If you, a lot of times now in this day and age, if you have, you know, there's all these different formats, this format cocktail, it's going to conform the, the project to whatever the first clip you put into it. So if you put in a DVC Pro HD 2398, the first clip in the timeline, that means every clip subsequent to that will be conformed conform to, that to that standard. standard. So, and, and Final Cut Pro 7 and earlier folks are familiar with that similar kind of thing, It's very similar, right? but the bottom mm -hmm. line is you want to be able to work with any format in real time. You don't want to have yeah. a big render bar. You want to be able to yeah. work with pretty much anything, and, and Final Cut Pro 10 made it possible. You, you can do that. You can Absolutely. mix and match anything you want in there and just play. And just play. All right. Beautiful. Now, you can also go into, there's a custom thing. You can go in and you can set custom settings here. Um, but most 
of the time, you're just going to, that Final Cut Pro, make the decision based on the first clip you put into it. Okay. Does that make sense? And yeah. same thing with audio. You could set, use a default sound, you, that's a default sound setting, surround 48K ProRes 422, or you can choose a custom setting. And it, so it defaults to 5.1 surround sound. Correct. Well, let's put it this way. All of the processing of the audio internally happens in 5.1 surround, but it's still, in this case, my MacBooks uh, can only output a stereo mix. Okay. It, it's going to down mix it to stereo. But For you. internally, it's it's being mapped to five discrete, or six channels, channels. Six, okay. six discrete channels, exactly. Wow, okay. So, um, and then I just click OK. And as soon as I click OK, notice what happens. I get a new, uh, it automatically opens a project called Time Lapse. Great. So new, new empty project new, that new you can begin, uh, begin editing, bringing, bringing your clips in for. Okay. Uh, absolutely. And uh, earlier, uh, I created an um, event in the previous lesson. There's a, a clip that I shot with my iPhone in a $90.99 time lapse app. And so let's say I wanted to work with this. Um, I just I can select the clip. And like we learned in the, in the previous lesson, you can make selections by dragging. You see, I can make selections here. Um, we're going to go into more detail about selections and, and stuff in a later lesson. But okay. right now, I'm just showing how you uh, you know make a selection. And I'm just going to drag that clip into the uh, project okay. slash timeline. Let go, and you hit the first clip there. And uh, you can see that as I zoom in, I'm using Command Plus to zoom in. Now. This particular project inherited whatever that clip was, okay? Right. So that begs the question, how do I know what that what how that do clip you know? was? Yeah, well, what was it? I mean, you could you could scroll over and using the media browser and you could you could get metadata information about the clip. That's one way. And you, you know, if you're not seeing everything, you can control click and you can actually see like for example, codex is not chose. I can chose I can choose this here and I can see um, the codec here is H.264. H264. Got it. So you can you can see what okay. that is. You can also um, select the pro. I'm going to go back out to the project library using the keyboard shortcut. Command, Command zero. zero. Exactly. And if I select that project and bring up the inspector by clicking this little I button or pressing, I think it's uh, Command four. Uh -huh. I saw you look at the tooltip uh, there. Yeah, <laughs> right, I cheated. All right, I admit it. Okay. All right, see. Um, it's, so, a, it's a lot of new, I mean, some of the keyboard circuits are exactly the same if you came from, from earlier to Vodka Pro, JKL and I know, and right. uh, Shift Z or uh, Command plus and minus, that's it's great. All, yeah. but, but there's some new stuff too. Yeah, there is. And, and the, the point here I wanted to make is notice I selected the project and I, and I brought up the inspector because there's a properties button. And that tells us now uh, what the actual project is. Okay. You can see it's nice. It's a it's 1080 720 24p. That's the setting that the iPhone right. shoots at. So it automatically conformed to that. And you can see it's 720 HD surround 48k. It even it tells you what hard drive it lives on, the date it was created. It even tells you what events it's associated with. Uh. And back to your question. Well, what if I add a clip from another event? Well, yes. that event would show up under referenced events. I see. I see. Yep. Cool. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty smart the way they have it laid out. Now, one thing that is a negative, um, and I posted this on various forums, is that it, it, it loads every project. So it's looking into the, the, your hard drive and looking at the projects that are, that are stored there, and it's loading all of them into the, into the project library. You don't have control to say, don't show me these. It's, uh, everything gets loaded into RAM. So if you've been working for a while and you've got many different projects, you open it and every single one is They're available all, there. all the time. And the only way to prevent that is to not mount the drive that that particular project okay. is living on. So so you can place decide where the projects live. Yes, you can. They don't they, well, they you default that, to a yeah. certain location, but right, you can decide what what where they live. Right, exactly. you had an option when you created the project for where to put it. Well, okay. actually if I had another drive mounted, you would see in the project library all my mounted drives, and I would select that drive before I created the project, and that's the and it, would go in it would go into okay. that drive. Okay, and then even after the fact, you can you could move the project right. Oh yeah, to you can else. move it. There's okay. some there's some media management capabilities. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. So projects. So so far we've kind of got events down, and now this whole idea of projects. Great. Uh, where can people go to learn more about Final Cut Pro 10? Well, we have a great. Training, uh, introductory training called Apple Pro Video Series uh, Final Cut Pro 10. It's a uh, 37 lessons, just under 37 five, lessons. 37 lessons, just under five hours. I think it's four, 450 or 445. But uh, it's got all the. It comes with all the media. Okay. You watch it on your iPad. So it's, it's a great way to learn. Awesome, Steve. Thank you, and we look forward to uh, diving deeper into Final Cut Pro 10. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.